Okay, so you have asked how to make your code a little bit more, um, oh, let me get rid of that stuff, a little bit more streamlined, more efficient. And the fun thing is that you're doing a great job. You've got a list here, right? You're having a choice happen for the list, and then you're taking, well, if that banana is going to cost two. And you're doing actually that three times because you're making three choices, which, again, I kind of like. But did you know that you can use multiple lists? And, in fact, you can... So, so this list right here, um, it's got a banana, and then it's got a cherry, and then it's got Steve's and Lowe, which is weird buying and selling people, but we're not going to get into the ethical and moral dilemmas of that right now. We're just going to be all like, we can actually say that this list has 16 items on it. And if I wanted the like third item, that would be uh, the third item would be Stephen Lowe right here, right? So that would be the first item, second item, third item. Uh, but in computer talk uh, and in Python, um, I think items in lists are actually numbered 0, 1, and uh, 2, right? So if we got, well, let me just do a thing really quick. If we get a, uh, let's go print, just to, just to print it out. I'm going to get items. Uh, and then if I put a bracket here, square bracket, and I put item 0, I'm just going to print the 0th item of the list. And let's go ahead and run this really quick. And the first thing I should see after I have a certain amount of gold, I'm going to print the number of items. Well, no, I'm going to print probably the word banana. Check this out. Cross my fingers. And in fact, we do. We have 83 gold and we have the word banana. That is because banana is in the zeroth place. So yeah, let's kill it. So now if I wanted to get Stephen Lowe in there, that would be in this place number two. Uh, yeah, yeah, place number two. Let's go ahead and run that. Uh, run. And then, of course, we got to save it. And now it says Stephen Lowe. So, interestingly enough, let's go ahead and close this. If I now use uh, the list for banana, right, I can pick a number that is a random number right here. I can go random. Random dot brand int, and then between 0 and 16. And this will give me a random choice, effectively, of that list, which I think is really fun. So uh, let's hit the function 5 button to run it. And I have a man. And uh, let's go close it again, sure, and then run it again. And I've got a cherry this time. Interestingly, uh, that is a, that is a lot of fun. that is a lot of fun because I am now using this sort of like items rand in here. It gets even better because if I do something like uh, let's grab my random int right here and yoink that right out of there, and I'm going to have this one call this my um, my item uh, one. Okay. Well, let's let's call this um, choices. Choices. Let's call this um, things. Let's call this things. And we're going to make things get a random number and a random number and a random number. And now I have three things. Ooh, let's call this store. Oh, you know what? Let's call this shelf items. Shelf items. Okay, and now effectively, I've got three shelf items, and if I come into shelf items now, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to print shelf items, items, shelf items, hold on, um, and let's get this, this is the zeroth, and then let's copy that, paste, paste, and let's have the once and the second. So what I'm going to do now here is I'm effectively going to print three random items from shelf items with items as my list. So let's run it. And right after my gold pieces, I have a hat, glasses, and a shield, which is super fun. 
Um, okay. And now, again, because I am using this list and the position of items in the list, I've made a list here, shelf items, of three random numbers. Okay, those random numbers are going to stay put for a little while, but those items up here, right? This is where it gets fun here now, too. If we have a cost, and then we make this, uh, it looks like your bananas cost three, your cherries cost eight, 100, um, 50. I'm just going down your list to what I can see, seven, and uh, and now I, well, uh, now I need a bunch more. Um, Let's go ahead and just look at what the rest of your numbers were. 7, 4, 12, 170, 4, 12, 170. Let's go down to 170. 15, 100, 9, 16. 15, 100, 9, 17. Really? 9, 17? No, I don't know. Let's just throw in some numbers in there. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That feels like it should be more than 16. Um, and so I'm good with it. As long as it's more than 16, uh, my issues won't be having problems. But here's the fun part. I can also print um, the, the, the cost of shelf items, right? Right here. So let's actually just copy this. Paste that. Now, instead of items, I want this from the list of cost. And I want this to be the list of cost. And I want this to be the list of cost. So now what I've got is I'm using two lists, one for the item name and one for the cost associated with the item. And because they're in the same place, they're going to be able to be accessed by shelf items with just random numbers, right? So if I run this, I mean, I don't have any logic errors, and I've got enough. Oh, yeah, the parenthesis was never closed. I knew it. Okay, that's better. Now let's run it. So now I have a hat, which is 3, and a lime, which is 17, and an orange, which is 12, which is neat. Uh, so I can actually, do you want to kill it? Yeah. I can actually come on down here, um, and, again, remembering cost and then the location, and then the item and the location. Right here in this beautiful little thing right here, right? Just hilarious. Um, we can actually do a thing. We can, instead of saying item one here, right? We can do, what was it called? Uh, what was it called? It was called items shelf zero, right? That's item number one. So put this in here, paste, item shelf zero. And this, of course, instead of gold one, right? This would have been cost of shelf zero. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. And interestingly, this right here, this number zero, and that number zero, I can effectively take this, right, copy it down into here, and the only thing that is changing is that this is going to be a 1, and I can take this down here, and the only thing that will change is that this is going to be a 1. So my numbers are a little bit off by 1, but they get really fun, okay, because now this right here is going to effectively be... Um, Let's copy that really quick. Let's come down here. And let's do a def um, by thing. And then in here, uh, let's have choice. Uh, perfect. And then let's go ahead and print this. And let's go with choice. And let's go with choice. And then instead of doing all of this stuff, all right, let's go by thing with a cho minus one. And we're doing a cho minus one here because they're inputting one, two, and three, and we actually want zero, one, and two. So I'm going to kind of, uh, I'm 
going to run it. Let's see what happens. Oh, unexpected indent. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's an unexpected indent. Perfect. Better run it. Okay, would I like one? I'd like one. Oh, trace back error. That's interesting. By thing is not defined. And that is because by thing is defined below where we are choosing to use it. So we actually need to grab this. Uh, we're going to cut that and put it all the way near the top. Basically right here. Okay, now it's defined. So I can run it. And let's go and choose two. Oh man, what's it? What's, uh, uh oh, unsupported operands. I've got a string instead of an int. Yep, that makes sense because I've got my choice. And you're using strings right here, but I am not using a string right here, and I'm not forcing it to be an input. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to force it to be an int right from the very start. Right from the very start. So that if they put in something like banana, oh, well, no, you want leave to leave, don't you? So you want. You want a number there, and you don't have anything for leaving. Um, but let's assume here that we um, let's put a little little uh, comment up here. Okay, I'm gonna handle the leave. Okay, and then buy stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna make this this be an int. There we go. Now I'm doing some some stuff, some easy math this button. Oh, click. Click that button. And let's go to... <gasps> Good choice. Here's a sword. Oh, that's interesting. But I've got some errors still in module by thing. And it tells me what? In by thing unbound local cannot access variable gp where it is not associated. Okay. So my variable gold? Gold points? isn't a global variable. So see down here, I'm using GP, right? But GP isn't, uh, well, sorry, actually, up here, GP doesn't exist, right? Here's my GP, and it's at, done here. Um, and you would think that that should work, but because it's uh, done afterwards, I need to put it before it. So I'm just gonna grab, go grab this it and put it after. There we go. Now it should work. That's all. Just gotta get things in order, you know, uh, two or three. Still, okay, GP where it is not associated with the value. Okay, so because this is a function, I need to do something here with my GP to make it global. And I wonder if I can do like global uh, and then GP. Do you think that works? Let's, let's run it. Because I wanted to use that save. Hey, and there we go. Neat, huh? I, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's actually double check to see what happened. Um, okay, so I cabbage, sword, lemon, cabbage, hat, eggs, which is hilarious. 15, 1, and 9. So these are being printed elsewhere. Um, that's okay, though, because here, right, where they are being printed, way down here, I fixed it so that this one is good, and this one is good, but this one is, is bad from here. So actually, let's, uh, what was this called? It's called item 2. 2. So my only item that really makes sense in this list is now going to be item 1, right? So let's go ahead and run it one more time. Okay, here we go. So my item, why are you not selling me the whole thing? Thank you. So again, Stephen Lowe, banana, orange. Stephen is 100. Stephen Lowe for 100. And then the other ones that I picked are man for 100, which is actually a banana for three. All right. So let's go ahead and do a number two. Number two and run it. And it says, good choice, here's your banana, which costs $3 for three gold pieces. It did the math, I now have 141. And it also did, here's your man, right? And then, of course, it gave me alignment, alignment, and orange. So, so I'm about to delete some stuff because we don't need this. 
don't need it. Don't need it at all. All of that is in there. Um, I don't need... Hmm, maybe I could do this. This could be fixed a little bit. I don't need this huge list of stuff. Oh, I know it feels bad to delete all of this stuff, but look, all that stuff is happening right there. Right there. All of that is happening in these two lines. Bam, all of that's happening. And I don't actually, um, I wonder if I do need this. Because um, what I, I mean, I could just do, right, you see one item. And it's not item one anymore. It's going to be this. It's going to be this. That's going to be item one. All right. Um, and and price one is actually going to be this. Bam. Now, I'm lazy. <laughs> just a little lazy. And I can see this and this line are basically the same thing. It's just repeated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop here. For, um, I'm going to go uh, for item in hmm, shelf items. Uh-huh. Then I'm going to do this. And I want to put item here. And I want to put... Hmm, I'm using the word item a lot. Let's go. Let's call it thing. Sure, so thing. In self items, item thing. This is my counter variable, by the way. Thing. I think I'll just do it. I think that'll just do it. Assuming I spell things right. Let's uh, let's go to run that. That was a big change, by the way. That was a huge change. Run it. You see? Oh, one, two, three. That should be one, two, and three, right? Uh, so let's actually, do you still want to kill it? Yes, kill it. Um, because this says one. You see. Oh, I want to be able to change that number, right? Um, but I don't have to. I can just rewrite it. Yeah, let's run that. You see. Lime for 17. Banana for 3. A man for 100. Type the item number of the item you'd like, and assuming one, two, and three, right? Uh, this is great. I don't think I need this either anymore. And so let's go back in and clean that up. Well, actually, let's make sure it still works. I bought a banana, which is a banana, and I did the math for minus three. Perfect. So let's go ahead and close this, and let's come up to here. I do not need to print this. Um, here's your... Oh, that's my buy thing. This is right here. I don't need to print these. Um, I'll just comment that out for now. Right. And now there ought to be a way, because there was a number, right? Uh, I could put the number in there with like an X value, you know, right here. Just make like X equals one. And X, of course, is getting the value of one. And then here I can do a x equals x plus 1. And then I see uh, comma x comma uh, pop, pop, pop. Pop. Okay, now let's run that. F5. Run it. Okay, so you see 1, cherry. 2, milk. Three men. Uh, let's get a two. And of course, <sighs> there you go. Oh, a suspicious statue. Let's get that. <gasps> do I have enough? Do I have enough? I do have enough. I'm just in debt now. It's hilarious. So, by using like lists here, and by understanding that lists have places, and understanding that we can use the place of the list. Right? Like again, the zeroth place is place number one. The one place number one is the second item. It's gotta be a, it's called the index, by the way, the index number. Um, and it did shorten the code quite a bit. That's a lot of extra blank space up here. Um, we had to, of course, put our gold points above our 
and we needed, of course, to use a global variable here. Um, and you might be thinking, well, I don't have to use the global variable down here for the gold. And interestingly enough, the gold's not even here anymore. Ha! Gold is only here. But also, you didn't need to do it down here because that wild true isn't in a, like, def. It's not in a function. It's in the same function, effectively, as that. So that's why you didn't have to worry about the global thing. The global just allows us to be able to use variables inside of a function that is similar to another function. Now, we could have done a different thing. Um, we could have passed in the global variable and returned, you know, the gold voice as well. Like we're doing with choice, we're passing in choice. Uh, choice exists basically right here, right? And we're using cho right here. But that actual number, we're subtracting by one, and that's what we're getting for our choice here, right? We could have, if we wanted to, passed in GP, and we could have even done something like return GP, you know, by thing, GP equals by thing, and it would have returned a new gold point. Uh, but we don't have to get that fancy right now. So yeah, it can. It can get a lot simpler by using lists and by understanding, again, that lists have indexes, and we can use that index to really be powerful with the list. This is a long, uh, very, very long conversation, but I hope this helps. Now I'm going to stop this.